So as relevant to the distinction between learning and performance uh, is sort of conceptual distinctions. So the researchers from many years ago referred to things like habit strength versus response strength, meaning uh, habit was like something like learning, response strength was how available something was right now in a given situation. So we sort of resurrected that distinction in a framework we call the new theory of disuse in terms of the distinction between what we call storage strength, which is like habit strength, and retrieval strength, which is an index of the current accessibility or activation of something right now at this point in time in the presence of these cues. Now we call it the new theory of disuse by its relationship to the so-called law of disuse, which was formulated by Thorndike in the early 1900s. And that was the dominant view of forgetting until work on interference processes sort of demolished it. That's the basic notion that without continued access and use, memories of, for information, for procedures, uh, are lost, uh, like a decay. And to this day, I think the average person would uh, tend to think that forgetting is something like that. But then the research showed, no, they're not lost. They become inaccessible. And the new theory of issues is sort of captures that idea, namely that rather than disuse causing things to decay, disuse leads to things becoming inaccessible, but that they remain in memory. So this is crucial in terms of how human memory works because we're characterized by this remarkable capacity for storage of information. Various ways of trying to estimate how much we can have in our long-term memory come up with such large numbers that you might as well just assume there is no limit. It's just phenomenal when you try to estimate across all of our memory for episodes in our lives, for visual scenes, for language, for skills. Uh, it becomes so huge that we might as well just assume there's something close to uh, unlimited capacity on the storage side. But then as we're all aware, there's some severe limits on the retrieval side. That is, we all have these experiences where we can't recall things we know that are in memory and that we can recall at other times, we can recall when we're back in situations. So whereas there's no limit on storage, there does appear to be limits on the retrieval side. How much is accessible right now in the presence of a certain situation, in the presence of these social cues, environmental cues, even body state cues? They select out what information is available and recallable of all this vast amount that's in our long-term memories. So that distinction is very crucial between what we call storage strength, which is kind of a measure of how interconnected or entrenched information is, how related it is to everything else that's in our memories, and retrieval strength, which is how accessible is it right now? And retrieval strength completely determines whether something can be recalled. But storage strength determines how quickly retrieval strength is lost or how quickly it's regained. And that's what's new in the theory is the assumptions about how retrieval strength and storage strength interrelate, not the basic distinction. And probably the most unintuitive part of it and the most important part is that the higher the current retrieval strength, the smaller the gains in storage strength that result from additional study or practice. This is quite unintuitive, but these effects are very large. Namely, if something's very, very accessible right now, uh, virtually no learning can happen. It can be presented again, you could recall it, nothing, no additional increase in storage will happen. But as we forget in the sense of losing retrieval strength, 
Then when things are presented, we get a larger increase in storage strength. So set in, you know, this, is, this is unintuitive and set in a way that's most surprising to most people, forgetting rather than undoing learning creates the opportunity to reach additional levels of learning. So as I space, I let time go by from a first study opportunity, retrieval strength will decrease, and if I test people, they'll be poorer. But if I represent the information, I'll get a larger boost and then be better in the long term. If I change the context. Years ago, we had people study things twice, either in the same room, three hours apart, or in a different room, three hours apart. And then three hours later, we had them try to recall that in a still different room. And when they studied in two different places, they recalled more than when they studied in the same place. But if you test people in a different room, you tend to find that they are somewhat more forgetting than if you test them in the same room. So, so the, the important emphasis here is that forgetting, which people may tend to think, well, I, I would say a, a normal characterization is as I learn, I build up something in memory. As I forget, I lose some of what I built up. It does not work that way. As you forget, you create the potential to reach a new, higher level of learning. So this is just one way in which the sort of functional architecture of humans as learners and remembers is, is sort of unintuitive, unlike any standard recording device.